It's less than a year since I last looked at the RTX 2060, so you might be wondering why I'm reviewing it again. After all, it's the same card and nothing comparable in features or price has launched in that time, so why bother going over it again? Won't the results be pretty much the same? Well, it may well be the same GPU as it was in 2022. In 2023, it's everything else that's changed. Since I last looked at the RTX 2060, two things have happened that make me want to re-evaluate the cheapest of Nvidia's RT-enabled graphics cards. In one aspect, the 6GB version of the 2060 should be slightly less desirable than before. So far, 2023 has seen a steep rise in VRAM requirements in new games, and while it's not in the rather dire position of the 4GB cards, some of which will trigger VRAM warnings even at low quality settings, it's not far off. On the other hand, the most intriguing thing about the RTX 2060 is just how far its price has fallen in the last year. £200 was the going rate last September, but since then it seems the competition on the used market has driven prices way down. I picked up a Gigabyte model for just £125 from a miner who was selling off a whole rig's worth of cards, and while that was a fairly exceptional deal, it's not unrealistic to look for buy now prices less than £150 and auctions closing even lower than that. This means that, for the first time, a used RTX card is competing in price with the newest new GPUs available like the RX 6500 XT, ARC A380 and GTX 1630s. <laughs> Sorry, it's hard to say that last one with a straight face. Last time, I don't think I fully explored the 2060's RTX potential with ray tracing and DLSS either. This time, I think it's worth going a little deeper. To do so, I'm running through the usual test suite on the moderately priced gaming PC. This is a minor upgrade from last year, with a Ryzen 5 5600X instead of the old 5600G, and now up to 32GB of DDR4. One of the more notorious releases of 2023, the PC port of The Last of Us Part 1 has been presented as one of the death knells for sub 8GB graphics cards, but in fairness to the RTX 2060, even if it had more than 6GB it would struggle to deliver 60fps. At 1080 medium it only manages 56fps on average, and while theoretically more VRAM would allow for some higher quality settings, in reality you'd either need to drop resolution or overclock the card to get to that 60fps target. 1440p meanwhile isn't out of the question, especially if you're not too concerned with gaming at 60. At the low preset with some texture settings turned up to medium, the 2060 fell just under 50fps without exceeding the VRAM limit. Star Wars Jedi Survivor can't hit a constant 60 with this card even at 1080 low, and 1080 high looks great, but has 1% lows barely above 30 FPS. Averaging a little under 50 FPS, this is actually pretty playable, if not ideal. At 1440p meanwhile, it is possible to maintain a 30 plus average by dropping to the medium preset, but 1%s are pretty low. Resident Evil 4 Remake performs very well on the RTX 2060, though you do need to be somewhat wary of your settings to make sure you stick within the VRAM limits. At 1080 graphics priority, the game glides along at a very smooth 85 FPS, with 1% lows well over 60. Turning up to 1440 is a bit of a stretch, so you may want to drop a setting or two to ensure things remain smooth. The 2060 is wild overkill for playing Forza Horizon 5 at 1080. At high settings, the game runs at 110 FPS in the canned benchmark and will run even higher in the open world. Pushing up to Ultra has a heavy impact on frames, dropping them to below 80 on average but still above 60 FPS at minimum. I didn't dare try 1440 at Ultra. The game is quite VRAM heavy, even though it doesn't always let you know it until you've started playing. At high, however, it runs at 85 FPS on average and 1% are above 70. It's pretty uncommon that I actually find a card that can comfortably run Halo Infinite above low settings, at least at a reasonable frame rate. 
The 2060 is one such card. It manages to maintain 60 plus pretty much all of the time at 1080 high, averaging 74 FPS. There's even room to turn the resolution up to 1440, though unless you drop other settings too, that will send averages below 60. At 1080 high, Playtale Requiem fails to reach the 60 FPS mark on average, which is a little disappointing. On the other hand, if you accept that PAL is the superior standard, you can instead see it as being slightly above the 50 FPS mark and therefore be much happier in your life. At 1440, you're looking at an average of 35 with lows below 30. You might consider dropping to medium at this point or using some kind of upscaling. More on that later. God of War at 1080 high still fits within the 2060's 6 gigabytes of available VRAM and is extremely smooth at nearly 80 FPS on average and over 60 FPS 1% lows. Turning up to 1440 can remain close to 60 on average, which is a pleasant surprise, though of course that does mean 1% lows drop well below 60. The RTX 2060 has no problem with Spider-Man Remastered, with 1080 very high managing 100 FPS on average and even 1440 remaining over 60 FPS. Both suffer from some pretty alarming spikes during my benchmark run however, and I think the VRAM might possibly be to blame. With averages like this, it might seem silly to drop settings, but I don't think it could hurt to try. Uncharted 4 presents a very clear line in the sand for the 2060. At 1080p you can do what you like, even go all the way up to the Ultra preset and still expect a 60 plus experience. What you probably don't want to do is increase resolution any further. Turning up to 1440, even at the high preset, takes a sledgehammer to the 2060's knees, dropping all the way to 35 FPS. CDPR, developers of Cyberpunk 2077, actually name dropped the 6GB 2060 in the game's current system requirements sheet. Allegedly, this card should be good for 1440 Ultra, but I'm afraid I have to call BS on that. At 1080 high, the game can almost manage a 60fps average, which is actually quite acceptable in my opinion, though the game still looks great at medium if you wanted to glean a few more frames. 1440 medium only manages 44 FPS, and Ultra falls all the way to 32 FPS, with lows of 24. The latest update to The Witcher 3 still runs very nicely on the RTX 2060. At 1080, it's possible to play at Ultra settings and still see in excess of 80 FPS, with 1% lows close to 60. Pushing up to 1440 without dropping settings doesn't quite hit 60 FPS, and lows drop into the 40s, but you still have plenty of room to drop quality if you own a 1440 monitor. Testing Fortnite can be somewhat laborious and hard to keep consistent, so I've taken to using the replay function to benchmark the same match at different quality settings. At 1080 low with epic view distance, the 2060 can push over 200 FPS. At medium that drops slightly but still remains over 160. At high it's possible to see almost 90 FPS, which means you get some nice visuals without completely gutting your frame rate. The Epic preset, however, is a no-go. Those fancy Lumen and Nanite features drop the average to just 30 FPS. 1440p, meanwhile, is an option, especially at the lower competitive settings. That manages 148 FPS, while the medium preset still maintains 100. Finally, Call of Duty Warzone 2, uh, just Warzone now, I guess, can pull some pretty decent frames at the ultra quality preset. At 1080 it hits 85, though lows do drop below 60, and that might make you consider dropping quality somewhat. You'll definitely want to make some tweaks at 1440, because while the average is over 60 FPS, the 1%s are only just over 30. And that's the RTX 2060, as it comes out of the box. And this is how I'd describe it when comparing with AMD cards and older GTX models. But how about some of those RTX specific features? After all, the most exciting aspect of this card is that it's the cheapest one with both RT and DLSS. Let's start with the good news. 
DLSS is NVIDIA's proprietary temporal upscaler. This means that it uses previously rendered frames to provide resolution data to fill in gaps caused when scaling up from a lower resolution source. Unlike other temporal upscaling tech from AMD and Epic Games, DLSS relies on the tensor cores to fix temporal artifacts. And these cores are absent from the GTX series, so the 2060 is about the cheapest card that has access to it right now. DLSS isn't available in every game, a fact which has been at the centre of some controversy lately, but is generally acknowledged to be about the highest quality upscaling tech out there right now, and is certainly the best reason to pick the RTX 2060 over other similarly priced cards. The Last of Us Part 1 benefits greatly from even the highest DLSS setting, pushing the 1080 medium average up close to 70 FPS and 1440 low medium into the mid 70s too. A Plate Tower Requiem benefits hugely, jumping from a 50 FPS average at 1080 high to a mighty 69. I feel like you're waiting for me to say something. At 1440 high, the average climbs to 50 and lows are now well above 30 FPS. In God of War, the increase in performance is high, but essentially meaningless. You are already getting 60 plus without DLSS. On the other hand, it's extremely beneficial at 1440p, meaning potentially a 60 plus experience most of the time. Spider Man is a bit of a weird one. At 1080, quality DLSS actually drops frame rates, both average and 1%. This might perhaps suggest that DLSS is causing a CPU bottleneck or something. Anyway, 1440p gains some extra frames to its average, but 1% lows barely budge. Uncharted 4 was already doing perfectly well without DLSS at 1080p, though adding it does send frames even higher. It's more beneficial for anyone trying to game at 1440 however, as averages now hit a very playable 50fps. Cyberpunk 2077 becomes fairly smooth with quality DLSS. At 1080, the average climbs from 60 to a more assured 76, with lows still a little below 50. At 1440, DLSS essentially gives the same performance as at native 1080p, and the game, of course, still looks great. The 1440 Ultra that CDPR recommends this card for rises from 32 FPS to 46 with DLSS Q. I didn't spend too long testing Fortnite with DLSS, as 1080 clearly didn't need it at low or medium. At 1440, the medium preset climbed from 100 FPS to 133 with DLSS Q, and 150 with DLSS Balanced. Plus, I don't know what it is, but Fortnite's graphics just seem to tolerate DLSS really well. Sometimes you'd hardly even notice it was on. Warzone meanwhile jumps from 85 to 96 FPS on average, with lows almost reaching 60 at 1080p. 1440 also becomes eminently more playable, climbing from 62 to 82 and with lows of 45. Of course, DLSS isn't the only part of the RTX branding that makes the 2060 appealing, right? What about hardware ray tracing? Well, the thing is, hardware RT is really, really taxing on the GPU, so although lower end cards like the 2060 can trace rays, it comes at a heavy cost. Jedi Survivor's self-shadowing actually breaks without RT, so it has a real noticeable benefit in this game. However, at 1080p high, it drops from the mid 40s to just under 30 FPS. At 1440p, frame rates drop painfully low, and there's no DLSS functionality included. FSR does a similar job to DLSS, and will certainly make for a better RT experience, but then any GPU can enable FSR. Resident Evil's RT preset is not particularly demanding, at least not in the area I use for testing. At 1080 the game is still a very playable 70fps, and at 1440 there's very little impact. Forza's in-game RT only kicks in when the setting is turned up to Ultra. Using RT with the Ultra Quality preset exceeds the 6GB frame buffer, but when added to the high preset, 1080p drops from 110 to 96 FPS. At 1440 it drops from 85 to 77, and enabling DLSS quality sends it right back up to 85 again. RT does a real number on a Plate Tower Requiem, cutting averages and minimums almost in half to barely 30 FPS on average. Adding DLSS quality at least helps maintain a steady 30, with averages of about 40. 
Spider-Man can handle RT at 1080, still running over 60 FPS on average, but with the same nasty frame time spikes as before. 1440 doesn't do so well, dropping to 46 on average, with 1% lows of 24 FPS. Adding DLSSQ helps somewhat, bringing the average up to 56.5 and lows close to 30, but you'd still probably want to drop to DLSS balanced for this one. Cyberpunk is of course the flagship RT title, so you'd be forgiven for wanting to try it out. At 1080 there are three main presets. Low just enables local shadows and has the least performance impact, 44 FPS without DLSS, 62 with DLSS quality. Medium enables RT sun shadows and medium lighting, but hammers frame rates down to 23 without DLSS and 34 with it. The RT Ultra preset brings full GI and reflections, and only 12 FPS on average. DLSS balance can bring that up to 24, but any lower scaling will have a seriously negative effect on quality for next to no performance benefit. RT Overdrive, well, I didn't really bother testing, I saw 5 FPS standing still, and FSR was never going to fix that. Witcher 3 likewise sees a heavy impact from RT. Adding the full suite of RT effects to the high preset drops the average FPS from 86 at 1080p to just 20. Balanced DLSS can get close to 30 FPS, but I have to ask why you'd bother at that point. In the same vein, Fortnite's epic preset with hardware RT enabled drops from 30 FPS without to 24 FPS with and DLSS Balanced only brings that up to 42. Enabling RT in competitive games is rarely worth it, and in this case, it's pretty much guaranteed to get you killed. So, should you consider buying the RTX 2060? If you're open to use GPUs at all, and aren't put off by the very real likelihood that they've been previously used for mining crypto, then it's a pretty sound buy at £125 to £150. Of course, it's not alone. The GTX 1080 from Nvidia and RX 5600 XT, or maybe even the 5700 XT, can all be had for similar prices, and at least one of those cards can way outperform the 2060. The best reasons to own one, then, are the RTX-specific features, DLSS and hardware ray tracing, but both of these come with caveats. As future-proofing technology, DLSS is about as good as it gets right now, but it's not available in every game. Frame generation, a technology that might well have a big impact on gaming in the future, isn't an option on the RTX 2060. Ray tracing may one day replace conventional rendering modes altogether, but by the time that happens, I think the 2060 may have been completely outclassed. It's not even powerful enough to run some heavier RT titles now without heavy upscaling. Finally, the 6GB frame buffer probably means this card's only going to be good for 1080p in the near future, and with reduced settings at that. On a more positive note, it's actually fairly efficient at stock, and can be made even more so without sacrificing performance. Check out the video on screen now for more about that. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.